how to go about doing things like this Chesterfield leather. Well, let's say we have a cylinder, and I'm going to ditch the circular shapes at top and bottom because they will look terrible if you work with them. So either poke the faces or delete them and use grid fill if you want to work on them. Next, let's define a trim to top and bottom with two edges. Then we can add eight cuts with Control r from the side pop-up menu. The idea here is to assign both the buffed and sucked faces so we can make a pattern. You can go with whatever you have in mind using connected vertices or with faces poking to get any geometric shape or pattern. So I added the cuts, used a checker deselect on the vertices, and connected the vertices paths. After that, with the control B bevel, we can reach this pattern where if we select those stars shaped at center, we can highlight all similar ones and flip them to circle with the loop tool. You can use the loop tool add-on to switch faces to a circular shape. The add-on is shipped in Blender, so just turn it on. To rescale the circles, switch the pivot transforms to individual type. Rescale them to any amount you want. The bigger the nicer, because I will add an inset to them and you will see why later. You can hit tab to exit edit mode and make sure not to lose selection. Also, drop on this shape a subdivision surface modifier with level 2 or 3 cause we will need the extra vertices for sculpting and remember to apply the modifier once you're done. We can now switch to sculpt mode, then highlight the edit mode selection from the face set menu. If you hover over those green parts, we can expand them with Control w while Control alt w will shrink them. So without the inset we added before, it would either include the entire shape or disappear. Hit A and choose the mask option. We need that with the box mask tool from the sidebar to exclude the top and bottom faces from any effect we want to make, and it should appear dark like so. You can also, in some cases, select the area you want to play with, then flip the mask, which can be easier if you're working on 2D objects like planes. Now to the good parts, Select the cloth filter which has a purple color on it, go to its settings in the properties, put it on inflate, and turn on the use face sets option to make it recognize those green dots in the shape. By recognizing, I mean the brush we have on, or the cloth filter will work separately on the shape based on the selection. So if we stand on the green parts, and with the mouse clicked and dragged to the right, it will inflate the shape, while dragging it to the left will suck it or pinch it, and we want those green parts to go inside, so click over one of them and drag to the left. We can after that hover over the white part and do the opposite to the right side to inflate. Keep in mind it might break if you go hard on it, so small taps can look nicer with a couple of clicks. Once you're done, you can use any brush like this blob one to add some random buff on it. You can use this to make furniture, clothes, inflated texts, or weird animations, all up to you. And that's it. Make sure to like and sub cause why not. And see you next time. Stay sharp. Goodbye.